let's jump into this this topic this week which focuses on diversity which i believe is one of our strengths as humanity to tackle some of these problems that we're talking about right now the rest of the topic is deib in my head but it's really jessica's voice is going to take us through what she's uh, achieved with her book that's coming out, I said this is all about you know improving the you know the social equality and balance and and reflecting at least North America, if not uh, improving upon it. No, I think it's physical cues and design stuff. I said Jamal, you could be right. We don't know. Where's Jessica? Where's Jessica? Ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Batten is right here with us today. Just life has been pulling me in a million different directions, but I'm really glad to be here today, and I appreciate the invite, Jamal and David, uh, to come here and talk about my book today. Just, I guess, recently through a sole, like confluence of many different events, I really started focusing on the intersection between DEIB and design specifically. Um, and it's something where, you know, throughout my, my whole experience as a designer, I've always been aware, <laughs> acutely aware, that I'm one of very few people who look like me in the spaces I'm in. Um, and that went from the classroom to, you know, getting out into the industry, going to association events. Um, and the thing that really got to me about that was the fact that designers design for everybody. So if there is so little diversity among the profession, who is designing for people of different backgrounds and on what basis? Um, a lot of that work seemed to focus a lot on how we interact among ourselves, like within an organization, in terms of operations. The DEI conversation often goes to recruiting, um, rarely to retention, which should be the top, the top topic, but that's another thing. Um, and a lot about, you know, how we show up for each other within an organization. And that I'm not saying that's that's not relevant. But we also have to look at how DEI applies to what we do as organizations. And specifically in the context of designers, yes, we do have to understand how what the implications are of DEI among ourselves as an organization between colleagues. But we also have to look at how it applies to how we design. What are we delivering to, into the world? And how are we honoring humanity in the work that we're doing as designers? The main things I explore in the book are the six habits of culturally competent designers, um, the mindset, environment, and behavior shift that needs to happen so that designers can design in a culturally competent way, and then the what I call the design for identity blueprint, which is actually that list of questions that we need to um, insert into the design process from step one, from our, our, you know, our original engagement with our customers all the way throughout the design process so that there are opportunities to bring up identity, there are opportunities to, uh, to validate our interpretations of what people share about their identity and how they want it represented, uh, to confirm whether we're getting it right, and then also at the end to circle back because design is never like a finite cycle. How can we improve on this over time as people evolve, as we evolve, and as design evolves? But when it came down to our projects, I believe they felt they they must have received the signal that nothing about their ident their particular background belonged on a board in front of a classroom. And I say that because even people who were born in other countries <laughs> in a whole other hemisphere, when they designed for that class, they designed in this Western civilization frame of reference. That alone should just be a question. It may not apply to everybody, but if you never put it out there, I honestly think that because the way design is structured, I would be willing to bet that even the, the, the design clients who have all the money in the world probably leave those things intentionally out of the conversation with designers because they think I'll figure that out later after the design is done because they feel like they can't bring that up with a designer. But that's just, I mean, that would be, and that, all of this plays into why this conversation of identity needs to become part of the regular routine. When we're looking at facilities for faculty versus students, very often uh, nursing rooms will be set up for the faculty, but not for the students because there's the assumption that they don't have children. Um, so something I'm trying to wrap my head around is how to do that with grace um, and have people um, get people wanting to be involved, but also um, make sure that someone's not.